Colombo. He likes that spot from the corner. At the free throw line, spots up and a soft jumper. And so, the first point scored. As well, how deep can you go? And Kentucky Wesleyan can go deeper. Matumbo. Four points, second bucket, had 17. Matumbo, 50 of 65 career games. Tough shot, Matumbo. Looked like he spread the wings out, and just floated <laughs> like a butterfly. Close, five times, five ties, eight lead changes, and the biggest lead was seven by Kentucky Wesleyan. But Metro keeps just uh, pouring it back. First of all, I mean, I'm honored to be here. Uh, my name is uh, Patrick Mutombo. I was uh, I was uh, born in the Congo, grew up in uh, in Belgium, and then uh, went to school here and, and spent a lot of time overseas. And I am currently an assistant coach with uh, with the Denver Nuggets. For the first time, I set foot in America it was in 1999. Uh, I've been I've been here since ever since then, you know, on and off, because I've I've had quite a few international um, stays, if you will. Uh, but I've been I've been in America since 1999. Originally, my father, who's a scientific researcher, moved to Belgium to to uh, complete his doctorate. But then, you know, the family joined him there, and the situation got pretty bad back home and. We ended up staying in, uh, staying in Belgium, and then from Belgium, where I, I did my uh, high school, or as they call it over there, secondary school, I uh, I came to America for the simple fact that, I you know I I was a good basketball player and I had opportunities to play professionally, but uh, I came from a family where getting a degree was very important, and it was just going to be hard to accomplish that task. In, uh, in Belgium, being a high-level basketball player and going to, uh, to the university. So I came to America, which was a better ground, uh, Metro State in particular, where I could both get a, a good education but also play basketball at a pretty high level. So that's how my transition took place. Patrick, uh, it's, it's my pleasure to introduce you as uh, the next recipient, uh, the next o awardee for the 2011 class Hall of Fame class at Metro State. Congratulations. Hello, everybody. First of all, I would like to, and I mean this sincerely, I would like to thank God for this opportunity I get to stand here in front of you guys. Uh, I'm not saying that for the sake of saying it. Uh, I'm a believer, and I really think that uh, I, don't, I don't take it for granted for me to be here alive uh, and, and, and give this speech and receive this unbelievable honor. I come from a place where a lot of people with whom I was born are no longer alive. So that's just to put things into perspective here. Uh, so I really want to thank God, first of all. Like I said initially, there is a ton of people that should be thanked for this day. And I'm just, I'm just humbled and honored to be a recipient of this award. Thank you very much. And I think. One thing that most Africans we have in common, you know, migrating to, 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 uh, uh, to, to the U.S. Or, or different countries, is that we have a, uh, the, commonal the commonality is that when we move, we all come here with, with a, a specific purpose. You know, we have, there's a sense of, of uh, you know, going somewhere to get something. We're not idle. You know, our, our efforts are towards something, and usually something better, something different than what we've left. And and I've been fortunate in the sense that, you know, that motivation that we all, most of us have, that that motivation served me well. Be it in school, I had a different purpose because I knew that I had left a place. I I had a left a place where I couldn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish as a as a basketball player, but also that was educated. I, I had the opportunity to do so in a 
drive and really realizing the opportunity that I had in front of me kept me focused. In that sense, I was fortunate because I had that engine uh, within me that helped me just fight through obstacles and accomplish something. That's a very good question. It, it was very difficult. You know, it, it was very difficult because when, when I came to America, you know, I came in an environment that was full of young people who spoke slang, who spoke fast, and quite frankly didn't have an understanding of, of what it's like to be, a, to be an immigrant. You know, to, you know to, to come from a different country and speak a different language in that sense. And especially in the basketball world, uh, a world dominated by English, really, here in America. It took me a long time to, to adapt. And on top of it, in school, uh, I studied political science, which was a major that, 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 um, that required a lot of writing and a lot of reading. And because of that, I think... I was able to pick up the language very quick, uh, very quickly, but you know th there was a lot of frustration, you know, about because knowing one thing and not being able to explain it the way the way that it needs to be explained. Uh, there's the language, you know, there's the the accent that I still possess to this day, but there's a there's a comfort now with the language that helps me, you know, look past the way I sound because we, we have a better mastery of words and, and how to express them. But, but the transition was very hard. But I think my major helped me tremendously pick up the language and, and then later on use it as a tool to communicate effectively. Yes, I helped recruit Matt Patrick Matombo from Belgium by way of Congo. Um, and Patrick was a freshman here in 1999. Well, Patrick came to uh, Metro State University, as I said, in 1999. Um, was a very young guy, 18 or 19 years old when we got him. Very raw um, from a basketball standpoint. Did not have a lot of experience. Um, but Patrick was a curious learner, you know, very ambitious young guy. Um, and long story short, he ended up being a very good basketball player, but it took a couple years. There was a process to it. The best way I can describe uh, Patrick is uh, multi-talented, you know. Um, was very important that he uh, excelled at basketball and it took him a while to, to get to where he wanted to, to go. But more than that, he was a curious learner, you know, political science major. Uh, was interested in a lot of different things. Patrick is a very accomplished uh, uh, artist as well, uh, painting, you know. so. Uh, has a lot of different talents. Actually, I think it's crucial to step outside of the box, to step, to step outside of the comfort zone, go and make new friends. For instance, I'm from the Congo. When I came to America, I'm not saying at all that that's the way everybody should go, but when I came to America, it took me three years to actually meet somebody who spoke French. So this whole time I had to adapt. I think, uh, Getting out of our comfort zone and going towards those who are different, who speak a different language, is key. I must credit the Lord, my God and Savior. I'm, I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. Uh, it took a lot of, it took favor for me to be where I am today because I didn't play in the NBA. I'm this kid from Africa, and today here I am in the best league, uh, in the best league, in the world coaching every night and against the best athletes in the world. And the way it happened, basically, I played professionally overseas. After I played at Metro State, where we did well, won a few championships, I was fortunate enough to go and play professionally in, uh, in Italy mainly. I also played in Greece. And then I came back uh, to the U.S. where I played in the D-League. But then, you know, my wife and I kind of decided that it was time for me to hang it up. And at the time, the circumstances were such that I needed to be in Denver and we weren't interested in, in moving elsewhere because our whole life up to that point had been about traveling in different countries and we were kind of just tired of it. And I got a call from George Carr and I talked to some of my mentor and, and, and some of them were very well connected with George Carl and he gave me a call and he and I connected and, and the rest is history. So that's basically how I started coaching and, 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 and I do not regret it and I want to acknowledge the fact that I'm very, very fortunate to be in this position.
My, my experience with Metro State was very rich. I came to Metro State when I was 19, hailing, hailing from, from Belgium. Uh, I played there for four years. I was able to get my degree, but also we were fortunate enough to have very good teams that were able to accomplish some significant things in terms of uh, uh, championships. Has eight lead changes, and the biggest lead was seven by Kentucky Wesleyan. The Metro keeps just uh, pouring it back. Matum time having anybody on him. What's impressive, Bob? He's great with the right and the left hand. 19 in the second half. Make it 20. He has long arms, so he plays like he's about. And final seconds. No shot at the buzzer, and the title belongs to Metro State Division II champions. Bob, they trailed by four at the half, and they went to Matumbo, who finishes up with 29 points. He scored 23 in the second half. He had a fabulous game. Well executed game plan. The trapping defense very much in evidence in this game. And also their patient, meticulous offense, which gets quality shots. And that young man right there, Mike Dunlap, knows how to coach basketball. And things I had never been accomplished in Colorado before. My first two years were a big struggle, mainly because of the cultural shock, you know, but also adapting to the American way of, of doing the business of basketball. But after two years, after two years, of, so to speak, of, of learning by my junior and senior year, uh, I had really good years. But the experience was unbelievable. It, it was great. I had a great staff. Uh, we had a great teacher in Mike, Mike Dunlap, who today is coaching at LMU after a stint with the uh, Charlotte Hornets in the NBA. He taught us many things, many things he taught us. and. And to this day, some of the lessons we learned from, from, from my time at Metro remain with me and is forever part, part of me. And hopefully I can instill the same values to, to my children. From my recollection, not many made it to the NBA, but a lot, a lot of them went on to play professionally. Uh, many of them are, you know, went and played in the Olympics and have, have, have obtained medals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so, yeah, quite a few of us went on and made a living um, out of playing basketball. Uh, hey, you sound like my wife now. <laughs> well, you know, I, I graduated, you know, I went to school. I went to school to, initially I wanted to, although I moved to, to the U.S., to be able to play basketball and, and obtain a degree. And my hopes were to be a professional basketball player. But rationally, I really wanted to be either a lawyer or a diplomat. That's the reason. Uh, therefore, that's the reason I, I took a, a, a political science as, as a degree because at the time they didn't have pre-law. Not sure that they have it now. That you know they, they didn't have a pre-law program, so I took political science, hoping to do that for a few years and then and then go into law school. But so happened that I was decent at basketball and turned out. I ended up becoming a professional basketball player and, and my degree, I'm not using it, I'm not using it now, but the accomplishment is there. The, uh, so to obtain a degree, as we all know, it shows focus, discipline and, and a sense of purpose. I got my degree in four years. I was fortunate enough to uh, learn, you know, getting a degree in a different language. Uh, so I'm not using my degree, but I got one. And, and, and it helped. You know, it's, it's a very good question. It's a loaded question. There are so many parts in, in your question and it would take a very long time for us to, to really go deep. My heart goes out for, for our young people where, you know, all, the, all, all our youth wants is, is a chance. Is a, is a chance to, to realize themselves. It, it's a, it, they need a chance to be who they are called to be. But we are so caught up in, in, in this greed and, and just this, this selfishness about, you know, staying in power the longest possible. And, and, and you know, I wish we would, as, as a people, broaden our horizons and people, the decision makers, and become more responsible with the human lives that they are, they, are, uh, they are supposed to take care of, really. They are supposed to lead, you know, the, a positive, a positive I'm, I'm, I'm convinced of this, a positive governance of the Congo 
will have such an impact in Africa, it could change the whole continent. And, and I hope that someday our leaders will awaken to that fact and awaken to that reality. And, and I, but I, I have to trust and believe that there will be better days ahead. Long story short, he became a very good basketball player, but he was very impatient. He wanted it, you know, right now, right away. Well, three words to describe America. I will say, first, first of all, opportunity. Opportunity. And I can say opportunity because when I moved here, it was for an opportunity to get a degree and to play basketball, which I was able to accomplish. And at the time, the only place I could do that was America. So openness, openness, meaning people tend to be a lot more open-minded in America than in other places in the world. I'm not saying that there's not other places where people are open-minded, but typically in America, if the will is there, and let's say somebody has a, a pretty good idea, the process that it takes to succeed are, very, are, are much more simplified in America than in other places I've been in the world. And the third one would be big. America is big. They think big. They're not afraid to think outside the box, although some Americans will disagree. But uh, big is another word, and in so many, in so many ways, in good and bad. But America is big. Oh man, there you go, there you go with your questions. I mean, these are questions that would take hours to describe. But uh, you know, I was born and brought up in the African culture. You know, I live there. I think I have a pretty good grasp of of all culture as Africans, that's who I am. My name is Patrick Mutombo. So regardless of where I go in the world, you know, regardless of what citizenship or what passport I hold, uh, my roots are pretty clear. It's, it's, it's Africa and that will remain with me. And, and, those, things, and, and those things that pertain to Africans. You know, we, we are people I think for the most part, Africans are very appreciative of opportunities because we know where we came from. Now, not all of them, not all of us fled Africa per se, but my family did. In Europe, some of my friends will tease me, but there are also some things I've adopted from the European culture. Uh, some of my, I've heard some of my mannerism, uh, some of the things because I, you know, I went there, I was 13 and, and up until I was 19, I think 18, 19, I grew up there my teenage years and, you know, I, I was... I was brought up there and then and then I spent time in America that also all those cultures, all those places have had an impact in me. Now, to pinpoint exactly what they are, I think is tough. But uh, it's it's a uh, it's, it's, it's something I'm really thankful for to have lived in those different cultures and and have had the chance to be impacted by those by those those cultures, those places I've been. You know, the thing about African culture that I really appreciate as I'm getting older and I have children and, I, and I've seen some things and I've been able to observe some things, we have a natural, a natural proclivity to respect elders. I think respect is big with Africans. Respect and honor, honoring authority, honoring elders, and that's one thing that I've gained from all culture that I want to instill in my children. Respect and honor. We have tremendous respect for gray hair. We have tremendous respect for people who've lived a long time. We have tremendous respect for people who have been put in place of authority. Sometimes maybe too much respect, you know, but that's one thing absolutely I, I, I cherish about my culture, about my African um, heritage. Not about America. They are fearless. Fearlessness, it, by that I mean they're not afraid to try. They're not afraid to, 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 to undertake a big, huge project. And, and I've seen it in many areas, be it in sports, you know, great ideas. They want to push the env envelope further and further. That's one thing that I do really have an appreciation about Americans. And if you have an idea, 
go ahead and try and, 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 and do it. They encourage people to go and, and try things that seem impossible. And that's one thing that I really cherish and, and I respect about the American culture. Just continue to be a humble guy, you know, because in the NBA, it's an environment where you deal with a lot of egos, you know, and sometimes you have to put your ego to the side. And, you know, uh, the thing that, that, that Patrick's already good at, and I would tell him to continue, is uh, he's a people person. And that's why he has a chance to be successful in that. So just continue to be that way, be humble and just be a people person. But that's what he is. Well, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for the opportunity to just share some of my thoughts, nothing too profound. Uh, they are what they are. And, and really my encouragement to people who are trying to make it, not only in America, but everywhere in life, I think stepping out of, com of our comf comfort zone if, is one of the primary element that helps people succeed. Too many people want to be comfortable and rarely, rarely success, rarely is success ever achieved by being comfortable. It takes being uncomfortable. My parents left the Congo to go to Belgium and start a new life for us. I left Belgium to come to America and try to produce something out of my life and my children, who knows, I'm pretty sure they will also migrate to maybe move back in the Congo. We we're hoping, we we're hoping as we are raising them. See, our children have seen different things. They have seen, they have seen things that you and I have not been exposed to and they have a different mentality. They'll take our mentality because we have a different mentality than our fathers and, and, and they'll take our mentality and hopefully push it. And I really do believe that the future of America, uh, future of Africa, a big part of it is also based with what our children do. So it's important that they don't lose their roots. It's important that they realize that from a very young age, that they are the carrier of a banner, the banner of Africans, because Africans dream big, Africans do big things. Africans are courageous. Not a lot of people are willing to leave their country to go to a place where they don't speak the language, they don't understand the culture, and trying to make a life for themselves. I know people who've left their country when they were 50, come to a place where they don't speak the language because of that thirst and that desire to see something better. And, and I think that doesn't leave us as a people. And our children instilled with the same fire, the same passion, will be able to be really uh, factors to impact that country continent along with us because we also have a work to do and that's why I do believe that there is a positive I'm optimistic about Africa although what we're seeing today is not what we want to see but eventually the continent will strive and people will see that Africa is truly a blessing a blessing to the rest of the world mm -hmm.